So on a regulation um, impact for your exchange in terms of the Bulgarian exchange, you know, we've talked about Emir, we know about MIFID, you know, there's obviously other regulations that we've talked about in terms of Frank Dodd. What's keeping you awake at night and how are you going to solve it? Um, I'm sleeping well at the ah. night. <laughs> uh, why? That because, uh, like, like I, I said before, we are using uh, like a trading platform, etc. And uh, talking about the regulation, the new regulation and impact of this re new regulation to the trading platforms, to the exchanges and to, to the whole market, uh, I will use the advantages of this contract <laughs> because uh, by that, uh, especially for the regulatory uh, changes, uh, the, 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 the Deutsche Börse will implement all these uh, ne necessary uh, required, required uh, changes. And I hope that uh, with some customization from our side, uh, this uh, will work well. Of course, uh, other way that uh, uh, talking about the regulatory changes in the MIFID, uh, if uh, we're talking about, uh, for us, a uh, little bit more impact we will have about the tra transparency and uh, dissemination of the information. Uh, because deal with this will impact our internal system, not only the main trading platform that we are using. And but I hope that we we, we will do well. That's all. And I mean, obviously, with regulation, we've seen Mifid One. We saw what happened with Mifid One with the creation of the new MTS, particularly here in 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 Europe. Um, you know, with Chiex and and. Um, turquoise and now Chai Expats and, and, and Turquoise. Um, you know, do we think that with MIFID 2, with some of that regulation, that we'll need new technologies to be able to um, help some of the new types that we think they're going to come along, you know, the, the um, OFTs, the, you know, the, the, new, the new definitions around BCNs Probably and SIs? I'm not sure that this will be, the, 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 that will be required uh, totally new technology, but for sure we'll need to improve the current uh, technology because uh, by example for market this uh, for transparency and uh, new um, uh, for the transparency for the monitoring and reporting of the information there are much more stronger requirements that we have to answer and uh, this will require the improvement of the technology in this way in our side i'm talking about well i think we should bring our next one down. Who's going to race first, Michael or Mark? Are you ready? Are you steady? Run to the stage. Oh, there we go. Michael's going to beat Mark. But he didn't know the forfeit was that he's going to have to do a tap dance rather than sing, did he? That was the, the thing, you see. <laughs> I think it's limp to the stage rather than was run. Was it limp? Right, limp, limp to the stage. Well. We'll talk about that one. We'll talk about that one later. So we, we just talked there about MIFID and the creation on MIFID 2 and about the creation of, of newer or the possibility of newer alternate platforms. Do you think there will, will be that? Do you think that will be the possibility? And do you think we'll have to have new technology? Will that regulation force new technology? Um, my expectation is that we won't need new technology per se, but some configuration definitely. The specific problem we have is we're a global exchange, so we have to conform to... Um, a lot of different regulations. Um, and I was hoping you would ask me what my wish for regulation was, and I'll answer that anyway. Um, because well, how do you know that's not going to be the last question, Mark? <laughs> I mean, you know, really. But my <laughs> you can get your wand in a bit. But this might seem a little contrary, but I actually, um, I, I, would, I almost want another regulator in as much as I would like some global convergence in terms of what the regulations are. So the rules are the same no so matter where you operate. you want another regulator or would you like consolidation of regulators? Consolidation is what I'm really after. Oh, right. But some kind of world police that tell us what we need to do. Because right now, if you look at the CFTC recommendations versus MIFID, um, versus regulations elsewhere in the world, because I'm conscious looking at some of the badges last night, we've people here for whom MIFID and CFTC don't really mm -hmm. mean a great deal. Um, they mean something to me because our systems have to conform uh, to any any jurisdiction in which we want our users to operate. But but do you think <coughs> I mean, you, we talked you talked there about wanting a, a global policeman? Um, one of the things that there are certain uh, certain countries where best execution, which is something that came in under under Mifid when you're trading, that although those although certain countries don't have to adhere to it because money has originated or people are used to that way of trading, you know. It, 
it's moved to countries where that regulation doesn't need to be applied to. Do you think that with the globalisation and with the rules that are coming in, people will just automatically apply them to certain jurisdictions, even though they don't have to? Um, there is some of that, and that would be absolutely lovely. But given that we've got gaps between the US and Europe, I think that's on a wish list rather than reality. Um, so, for example, uh, there's a little line in MIFID which has escaped a lot of people's uh, attention, um, but you won't find it in any other regulation, which is the concept of a, an exchange being obliged to set the minimum order resting time. So this is the anti-zero latency uh, move, if you will, to end the arms race. Um, that would sit uh, in, in stark contradiction to regulations elsewhere. So, Mark, ready to tap dance? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll give the guitar a go, right? Well, I think we've almost got a regulation band here. Vaz, we've got two guitarists. Do you play the guitar? Oh. No. Oh. Triangle? No. <laughs> <laughs> so we've not even got percussion. No. Oh, well. <laughs> so would you want uh, a global policeman like, uh, like Michael does? Mm. I suppose, like, like all policemen, you want them to be informed and understand the real impact. Can you, is yeah. it on the microphone? I don't think it's coming through. Hello? Yeah, um, a global policeman, I think I want an effective policeman. I don't really have a preference for his location. I, I think the problem, we are getting to magic wand already, but <laughs> the, the issues with regulate, I mean, regulations are there for good reasons, and when they're effective, course that there are benefits. The difficulties that I sometimes experience with regulators is that you have well-intentioned people who don't necessarily understand the context or the complexity of the particular business model that they are in, uh, charged with regulating. Um, the, other, the other very important aspect is that cost-benefit seems to come second to um, to the regulation function. So uh, quite often there may be a conceptually good idea in, in how to police a particular activity, but if it is policed in that way, the activity will cease to exist and all you're gonna be left with is the policeman. So magic wand, well-informed, well-educated regulators that understand the, the correct balance between commerciality and the regulatory purpose. And, and it the US has got a consolidated tape in terms of regulation. It's one of the things that hasn't come up. It's one of the few things we haven't talked about today on the technology stream. So I would be remiss if we didn't talk about it. You know, uh, you know, CTP, ATP, can we think of another acronym? I'm not sure I can off the top of my head. Yeah. Consolidated tape. Um, I think it's coming our way. There's various ideas on how it will manifest itself. Um, personally, I've been involved uh, with the FESA Economics and Statistics Committee for 10 years or more, and one of the initiatives which initiated in the Economics and Statistics Committee and has spread out wider to the vendor community, the MTF community, BOAT, CHIX, etc., is the MMT, the Market Model Typology. Um, that, that, that particular program do doesn't... Yeah, that particular program doesn't set out to solve everything to do with consolidated tapes, but what it does try to do is create a protocol which will allow consistent and comparable market information. So it's not, at this point, looking at commercials, it's not looking at legals, it's looking at how can you get information that is essentially going to be fungible between providers. There are 55 trading venues, there are 80 different data feeds that are relevant to the consolidated tape platform. MMT creates a standard, has created a standard. It has got significant buy-in from um, a large number of the market players. It has commitment from all of the European exchanges to implement the, the actual, let's call them flags, in their data feeds. In, in anticipation of that happening, there is a published free to license translation mapping table which will allow you to compare any trading venues uh, information with another ex exchanges information or MTFs information um, to allow for comparable information to be created. 
we have got very good feedback from um, ESMA. Mm -hmm. The particular protocol itself is based on the, uh, the CSER working group on reported transactions going back a few years ago, and that's got a lot of momentum going. Um, it's not the only initiative out there, but it is one of the initiatives that has actually created something tangible and has got significant buy-in at this stage. So from your perspective, Faz, you know, you just heard Mark talk about MMT. Are you bought into it? Do you want it? What do you think about sort of cleaning up uh, reporting standards and moving towards a uh, consolidated tape? I think it might need a microphone. Or two. <laughs> uh, from my perspective, is uh, how to say, uh, our market is a very small one. Uh, we have just one uh, stock exchange trading only equity on spot market. And it's very simple. It's, uh, uh, I, it's very easy for me. I do not need to consolidate anything. Uh, just is in my in my basket. And uh, that only I needed is uh, to to make our our uh, communication to the world more standard. That is uh, the, 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 the thing that we have to do. And, and Michael, sort of OTC and OTC reporting and OTC reporting cleanup, you know, in terms of the, you know, the technology around that, do you think that's something that should be done? I think there's one of the things that was being talked about at phase A as well as part of the um, MMT. You know, want to talk about that? I, I think the challenge there is, is twofold. Firstly, um, who are the trade repositories and how will they be appointed? And, and that's not crystal clear at the moment. We've been talking to the FSA about our potential role in the middle space. Um, but the second one is this, uh, again, it's a, it's a shadow at the moment. It's, there's no real um, uh, flesh on the bones that we can critique, is the concept of standardization of OTC con contracts. Um, because for trade reporting to be meaningful, you have to be comparing like with like. It's not dissimilar to the consolidated tape. Um, and at this juncture, uh, when you look at the exotics which are traded and then backed off through, uh, through the components on various exchanges, seeing how that could possibly uh, be put into some sort of consolidated trade repository is actually very hard to imagine. Now we're halfway through our debate, which means that we are halfway through towards the end of our day session. So I just want to open it out to the floor before we continue debating here. Has anybody got a question? Saj, Jan, come on, it's supposed to be light. Oh, here we go, yes. Hand up in the front row. The transatlantic man. So you guys talk about trade reporting, but I want to touch a little bit on surveillance of the market. We talk about regulation. So I'm going to make an analogy similar to what Seth Nering did yesterday morning about the airline industry. Uh, in the airline industry, you have a regulation of air traffic. And you have the surveillance of the planes in here, which is done by air traffic control. And there is only one, and they are looking after and surveying all the planes from all the companies. In the financial market, it seems to me, by experience and with the, um, the opening to competition with ATS and MTF all over the world, that it likes in a market where every single of the exchanges and the MTFs are their own airline, and they survey their own plane on the, on, on, in the sky without looking after anybody else's plane. And that the regulators, uh, look at the end of the day and count how many planes have fallen down and how pe people have been killed. Because you can imagine if every single airline is controlling the, tra the air traffic of their own plane, how many people will die every day with plane crashes. So don't you believe that our role as venues, stock exchanges, ATS and MTF, is not to go back to the regulator and say, instead of always pushing it to us, to ask us to regulate our own market, we can survey our own market, but we can't survey the market. And don't you think it's the regulators who are to come up with better technology, better people, better pe not better people, but be better technology and strategy to survey the market in real time, similar to other uh, industries? So, Michael, somebody who's got a similar wish in terms of a, a, a global policeman, wh what's your response to Jan? Um, I, I think you're spot on. I think the um, regulators have uh, been cottage industries almost, and they've failed to notice globalization to some extent. And there's almost been a reverse pressure on regulators not to over-regulate and drive uh, trade into other uh, geographies. Um, I think uh, a, a classic example of exactly what you're talking about, that uh, uh, it would be too harsh to call it a lack of competence, but a lack of capability, was exemplified in MIFID 1, 
where trade reporting uh, was to be the thing and various ARMs were set up to uh, consolidate that information. Uh, only to discover that, of course, most of the regulators had absolutely no way of consuming the data that was being, being sent to them. And it was only ever used for after the fact audit rather than any kind of real time uh, monitoring. I think that is absolutely what's called for. I'm uh, talking about the, 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 that uh, I'm also support, I'm supporting the, the central regulator because. Uh, like a small exchange, uh, we have interest all the things to be regulated centrally because of the, how to say, I, I need to be part of uh, some big family and to work on the same rules and uh, this is important for me. But that central regulator to also come up with your technology solutions, was that what you were yeah. saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. We spend fortunes in, uh, for example, uh, weather pattern and weather detection. So somebody can tell you, except in the UK, what, what, what <laughs> will be the weather, except in London, sorry, what will be the weather tomorrow uh, with supercomputer digesting data on a real-time basis. It seems to me that we should apply the same, the same amount of money uh, towards the right technology at the central point at the regulator so they can do the same kind of work. Um, conceptually, what you're describing does seem to have a lot of advantages to it. I think there are some practical difficulties, um, one being that local exchanges, local MTFs, local markets will have their own profile and they, they, they need to be considered. Um, secondly, I would, I would agree with what you're saying that the, the regulators say, well, we need a particular type of surveillance tool, therefore, markets, please, will you go and do it, as opposed to doing it themselves. And, and, the, and when they do have responsibilities to take on new technical or data-related solutions like the transaction reporting, they're usually not able to embrace them as well as they should. On the other hand, sometimes if, if, if such a global regulator were to make a global mistake, it affects everybody. So for example, I, I've been speaking recently to someone um, who, in, in a regulator, who told me that ESME are considering a global order book to replace all of the order books. Now, you, you can imagine all of the bells and whistles that would be involved in that and, and, and how, how long it would take for it to work, et, et cetera. Well, when you're talking to a regulator, you can't say, listen, exactly what do you know about this business? It's not that easy to have them conversations. It'll come back and kick you in the bum, you know? Um, so from the, from the point of view of having regulators take more responsibilities to combine their forces, um, become technically savvy, relevant to our markets, oh yes, I think that's a very good thing. But I think it, it would have to happen in a way which ensures that the, the market operators, the integrity of the market operators, the functioning of the customers that we are there to serve does not get um, compromised in the meantime. Other questions from the floor? Mm. Fred, I don't know your name. Hi, uh, Patrick Lastener from Interaction. Uh, just on the subject of ISMA, do you see any signs from them, um, any appetite for them to position themselves to do this uh, also, not just post-trade, but also pre-trade uh, surveillance and position themselves as, a, as this super regulator? P personally, I have no direct context to talk about that particular question. In, in when it comes to the, the regulation and the consolidated tape and the interactions I've had with them, it's always been in the post-trade space. So I, I can't say yes or no, I have no frame of reference. I think that one of the things that has to be defined by us as a market actually is around whether it's, um, uh, we are talking about pre-trade or post-trade. I know that one of the working groups, particularly the buy-side worker group, have Know, have quite a lot to say, particularly around the pre-trade, and uh, most of the conversations and most of the working groups at the moment um, are actually looking at solutions for the for, for the post-trade. I don't know whether anybody else wants to, to comment. Uh, no, I've no direct info either, but I, 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 I've heard the same, that it is mostly on the post-trade post, post -trade front. Um, but I don't 
whether is, is a, a particularly well positioned to be that global regulator, I'm not so sure. I don't think they have the resourcing. And I think that's the core problem, is, 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 isn't one of competence, you know, it, if, and it's a global problem. I remember there was a conference in Chicago in uh, November and basically um, CFTC were up there pleading poverty. They didn't have enough money to buy the new servers they needed. Now, when we're in that sort of situation, I think, you know, we, we, this is, we're talking about wishes here rather than anything that's going to happen soon. Sarge, lovely. Thank you. Sarge, sorry, no R. Apologies. Uh, there seems to be a lot of um, angst against the regulations and the fact that they're not mature enough and they don't have enough servers and they don't have enough support staff and whatever. What do you, each of you see as actually the, the, the largest opportunity for your businesses in the regulations in terms of you know, what actually can you can actually leverage to sort of support your commercial model or your business strategy? Uh, for me, that would be trade repository. You know, that, that, that might seem a little facile, but there, there is a, an opportunity born by regulation. Here's something that has to be done. We get in first, we'll do it. Um, and it, won't, and it won't be that you'd make a lot of money doing that because you're only allowed to recover your costs. But the beauty of doing that is the stickiness between the on-exchange and OTC trade. Um, so that, that is a big opportunity for us, for sure. Fas? I will, I will repeat again also the, 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 the my uh, uh, opinion from the first panel that also this is the central depository development. Um, I'm going to talk about something slightly, slightly different angle. The biggest opportunity, or the most important opportunity, to try and influence the development of regulation, the appropriate development of regulation, um, there are two things which jump to mind. First of all, is having a, a healthy relationship with your regulator. That's that's not reactive, but but proactive. I know in the ISE, there, there's not a day goes by we're not dealing with the regulator. On, on, from my own point of view, on the technology front, I'll be dealing with them two or three times a week. On a policy front, it might be once a week. And then um, for future developments or future plans, it might be once or twice a week. Um, so I think having that relationship so that you, there is a common understanding of your modus operandi, a common understanding or, or a, a consistent messaging, I think that's very important. Another. Another important avenue that the ISE uses is federations like FESA or World Federation in, in other, um, other situations so that you're not one exchange or one trading venue with one particular message and that you have um, backed up your opinion with contemporaries in your industry but also with market research or examples or some kind of a, a prototype research ex, uh, activity, etc. So um, I suppose on both fronts you're talking about methods of communication and ensuring that the communication channels are open and healthy and hopefully bi-directional. Does that answer your question, Sarge, from the panel? Any other questions from the, from the floor? Banu Yobash, Central Register Agency, Turkey. Uh, my question is regarding the uh, second part. If there will be a, a regulatory impact on the exchanges, how can you prepare for this? Uh, in terms of this question, do you think the civil uh, organizations or the initiatives which are uh, started by the exchanges themselves are doing their best or are there any space for them to either make advisory or other uh, suggestions to the regulators because regulation may be too important to leave to regulators alone. Right, interesting take on that. I think uh, you've got the, the microphone in your hand there, Mark. Okay, um, if I understand the correct, this, the correct the question correctly, you're asking are there things that trading venues, particularly exchanges, can do to anticipate regulatory change? Is that the question? Uh, yes, maybe uh, there are some points which exchanges uh, are in concert with the regulators and there, there are some issues which you are concerned, especially on those issues. Maybe exchanges or the organizations may come together as an initiative or as an organization like World Federation Exchanges or other organizations and uh, 
uh, maybe issue a report or make some advisory commands and something like that. But I think I think there are quite a lot of a uh, lot of, of bodies um, and collectives and communities around, you know, both in Europe and in the US and in Asia, all working together. Um, and whether that be buy side, sell side, exchange, um, and yeah. it marks on the, marks on the committee of, of many. Uh, I I um. I, I work with FESA, I work with the World Federation, I'm on various working groups with like fixed protocol, etc., on things like consolidated tape. Um, the answer is yes. I, you need to be able to represent your case, not just specific to your own personal business benefit. It has to be seen in the context of the overall market, the overall effect of, of market, uh, overall market structure in Europe. Um, and then on a, on a worldwide basis, um, wider again. I think that's the only way that you can really get big change or, or to try and steer that ocean liner, you know, one or two degrees in the direction that you want. Because for, for the regulators themselves, you have to appreciate that they are, it's not like the Irish Central Bank is sitting there dreaming up what it will do. They are getting their, their instructions from the European Central Bank. And quite often, while they may appreciate your particular case, their hands are quite tied into what they can do. And if you're only one voice, if you're only one company that's arguing the, the, the point with them, there's not a lot that they can do. If, if you can get the critical mass behind you, that is far more likely to get real change than anything else. I think there are quite a lot of consultations around MIFID and um, if you need introducing to any people, I'm sure anybody on the, on the panel can do that. I mean, I think that some things that are being discussed at, at the moment are around sort of, you know, how to address best execution further across more, more asset classes, expanding the reporting transparency, how, that, how that's going to be done, whether best execution includes OTC, whether it doesn't include OTC. And I think that's why MIFID 2 is not coming until 2014, because there are still quite a few things up in the air for people to discuss. I don't know if anybody else on the panel wants to take anything on the, the lady's question. Um, I, again, the answer is yes. Um, and it's also important, I think, to, con uh, to have a, uh, a conservative view, not just across a country, uh, because European law quite often can be, uh, if, if all of the London exchanges, for example, get together, yes, we can uh, influence the FSA, but in terms of influencing the European regulator, we need to have a voice that's in common with all the other countries uh, affected by that regulation. Now, this is something that, um, and I think it's important, important point that, you, that you actually sort of implicitly raised there, that it's not just talking to the regulators, it's talking to the politicians as well. Um, so we've made representations both by ourselves and with other exchanges to um, the Senate in the US um, because of the, the talk there of lending limits in commodities exchanges um, and pointing out to them the, the fallacy that that would be a good control. Um, similarly, we, we, we have made representations across Europe for some of the detail in MIFID, um, but you know, we go back with that and, it, and it's, I think if we look at our recent history, where we failed to influence regulators is where we've been a lone voice um, or haven't consulted with other exchanges. So I think your, your idea is absolutely right. Any other questions from the floor? So it's time to get out your wands. You can't have the same wand that you had last time. Maybe it's the, the new Harry Potter version. <laughs> what are you going to wish for? Well, I've, all, I've already went through the two things that I'd like, which was um, <laughs> commer the, the, the commercial cost benefit to be uh, understood and for the business context to, ha to have the experts in place. Um, other than a bike for Christmas, I, <laughs> I think that they really would cover off a, a significant amount of the areas of pain that we deal with in, in trying to work together with the regulators. That's, that's fair. You're consistent. That's, that's yeah. also good. Vaz? My wish is uh, to have cooperative regulator, <laughs> which is very important. Oh, I think you might have just stolen Michael's wish. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't want to be too cooperative. We'd be asking for the wrong things if that were the case. I mean, I've already asked for consistency across uh, jurisdictions. I guess the other thing that we probably all wish for is sufficient notice to implement change, because too often these, uh, the actual impact of the changes required 
causes us to do a suboptimal uh, solution for where it, whereas with a little more time a little more thought we could be putting in better solutions that, that will anticipate future regulation as well well i think that's a very good point to, to end the afternoon on i'd like to thank all the panelists so please give your hand to, to michael to Vaz and to mark <laughs>